Have you ever turned to the book of Revelation, anticipating what you might find and then being kind of surprised, maybe even uncertain in what you find? Maybe even looking at the world today and just wondering how we as a Christian community faithfully read such a book and then lean into the context of the world and the news and our history? Then maybe this video series is for you. Hopefully you can stick around as we explore this book of Revelation and invite you into a faithful response of the Christian church. As we open the pages of Revelation, as we look to what seems to be the end, the end of our world, the end of everything we might know, as we then look to history, as we look to our current state of affairs, turning on the news, maybe doom scrolling through Facebook, we start arriving at some pretty interesting questions. Maybe we start feeling a certain sense of anxiety, fear and concern as we figure out what is going on. How do we as a Christian people respond and faithfully live out our discipleship journey in light of what is coming? You know, I found out that maybe it's helpful for us to journey back to the beginning, to start in Revelation, to start in Genesis and see what God is doing as God creates, as God has a plan, a design for what God has made. You know, God invites humanity in to reflect God, to glorify God, by both loving God and loving each other. And then that projects us to what God is doing in the end. Because you see, humanity chose something less than that. We seem to choose death, hurt, pain, and anguish. And God comes along and tries to redeem and restore us. We then see this person of Jesus coming along and bringing on salvation. And yet this promise of an end, of, of God coming together and recreating but not fully undoing what God made. You see, there's this idea that God doesn't abandon what God made. We see it in the very beginning with the flood, where God gets frustrated with all of this sin and the hurt in the world and destroys everything but one family. And God uses that to then bless the whole world. You know, then more famously, we also see as Israel moves into exile, as the people of God again turn away from God, get led off and astray to a place where there is no temple, where they can't worship their God, where God doesn't dwell with them, God makes a promise. God reveals to them that there's a small remnant that does remain, a faithful group that is faithful to God, that is still worshiping God and allows the people to then come back and respond to God. We see it also in the person of Jesus, that God doesn't create this new humanity. God doesn't start something new, but God uses what God made, a broken and a wounded world, a broken humanity to partner and be the Christ to help redeem what God has made. And that points us again to what God is doing in the end, that ultimately we might reflect God, that we might glorify God without any of the woundedness and brokenness in our world. As we explore Revelation, we start seeing things to get pretty intense. These images of fire and burning, anxiety, all kinds of wars and really difficult things happening. But we see in the story that it's a way that one more time God purges, so to speak. God removes anything that represents the curse of death that humanity chose. God takes everything away so that all that is left is this perfect idea of what God made. And God gathers that up and promises to create it anew where there is no hurt, turmoil, or death. And we get to live and exist in that space. So as a church, as we journey towards the end, it can be kind of fearful thinking about what is coming, but we are invited into a beautiful hope, almost an anticipation even of what God is going to do in the end. We don't need to be afraid that it's not gonna pan out because we know that it is going to work out and what God is planning to do is going to happen. We can see again from the beginning that God is projecting us to an end, an end of fullness and full salvation where we live in an uninhibited relationship with our God. So hopefully as we journey through this season, as we explore what is potentially coming, the turmoils and the difficulty, we can embrace a posture of hope and a posture of excitement as we journey through and reflect our God by loving God and each other. And yeah, maybe it does get 
little bit difficult. Maybe times do get hard, but God has promised to see us through to the end. Amen.